Well, new cycle focuses, uh, we have two initial focus areas um, uh, out of this fund. I mean, we're, we're definitely a big believer that um, venture capital is all about finding the areas where the perceived risk is higher than the actual risk. And, um, you know, we believe that we could go out and find sectors um, where, uh, th where that was true uh, and where businesses were, by definition, were tackling a strong, uh, you know, tackling a big social problem. Um, and they were tackling that um, and uh, they didn't have sources of capital necessarily that other entrepreneurs had access to. Um, again, because most VCs or other folks would feel that, that the, you know, that the uh, perceived risk was, was, um, was high. And we felt we could come in and support those companies and create great businesses and have a strong social impact as well. So we have two initial focus areas. One we call the extended green economy. And this falls back on work I've been doing for years uh, around alternative energy and energy efficiency. And so we're primarily focused on what we call the, the um, uh, kind of second wave of businesses. So first was a real a wave of investment in infrastructure around solar and wind. And now there's a lot of businesses emerging around that. So energy efficiency businesses, green building businesses, um, uh, you know, demand services kinds of businesses. Um, and we're also interested in what we call the domestic emerging markets. So we believe that uh, America's inner cities represent an incredible investment opportunity and America's ethnic populations that other people just aren't focused on. And, um, and again, when you have lack of access to capital, you can, uh, if you provide that capital, you can come in and generate great returns and, and build great businesses as well. Um, so we're very interested in, in particularly fair financial services you know, 50 million Americans without a checking account. We're very interested in uh, consumer-driven health care, 50 million Americans without health insurance. Um, lots of new businesses being created by great entrepreneurs that are focusing on solving these problems. You know, we have investment in a company called The Villa, which is an uh, inner-city retailer with a very strong social mission. And um, basically, they go where the retailers don't want to go, and they invest in these communities. And it's all about creating careers. Um, so you start out and start on the floor, and then you become a store manager, and then a district manager. And um, you know you can make seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a year um, without high school education. And there's not a lot of ways for people in these communities to get great jobs, learn the skills that they need to be part of our uh, of our economy. And um, and it's a it's a tremendous social mission. In other ways, they clean up the streets, they work with schools, kids get discounts for for good grades. And ultimately, you know, we think that this can be a public company. And um, our goal is to generate fifty to hundred million dollars in stock option wealth in some of the poorest communities in America. Um, next year, we're projecting 55 million revenue. Uh, it's already a profitable company. When we, you know, with the villa, um, when we took it around to uh, a lot of traditional venture capital funds, um, they uh, and we talked about the loss ratio. The loss ratio is the theft ratio in stores, which is a problem in all retail shrinkage. Uh, yeah, uh, it's another word for shrinkage, I guess. It's a problem in all retail environments, and uh, and we present the loss ratio numbers for Secret Villa, which are actually quite low, and people would say. Um, we don't believe these loss ratios, okay? They say, we don't believe them, you yeah. know? And so, um, you know, so that was really a mindset. Again, it gets back to the fact that, you know, they perceived the risk to be a lot higher than, than it really was. Um, and um, so, yeah, clearly there's mindset issues. Um, I mean, there's a mindset that, you know, you know, again, by definition, anything that is social, you're trading off return. That's a mindset that many, um, uh, uh, investors, institutional investors have. So people that are managing money for Harvard and Stanford and the big endowments, and people that are managing money for Rockefeller and Hewlett and large foundations, many of these people have this mindset. The, you know, we've proven now, and we're proving now every day, um, that you can't, there are business opportunities where you can do both and you can have a great financial return and a great social return. So we really, what we really need to do is change the mindset of, of those folks of the, what's called the limited partner community. We need to change the mindset of people who are the gatekeepers for family foundations and for union pensions and for endowments and people that control fund of funds. And we need to change their mindset so they can, you know, these are people that are already investing billion dollars a year in venture capital, right? And what we need to say is, yeah, instead of going into the 100th tech fund, you know, go into this kind of fund.